In this box, we have the Bina audio interface or the Bina sound card. And in this video, we are going to do the unboxing and review of this sound card. Now, we are going to open this box. And when you open this box, uh, the first thing you get, of course, is a manual <laughs> that is going to direct us. And then, <laughs> now look at this, Mwah! the Viner sound card. My friend, I think I like this. I like the weight. It gives hopes to what we expect, the quality of sound we expect from this. And then we got the two uh, cables. We have the USB-C cable just for power. And then we have the PC USB cable that we are going to be using uh, to uh, connect this very binary sound card to the computer. Now, that's much about the cables just for power. What I'm interested in is this guy. Oh my goodness. <sighs> I've already done a video uh, using this sound card. You can check it uh, in the description and you can rate it on a scale of 10. Now, we have a lot of knobs here. First of all, it has four inputs for microphones or for instruments that you're using. It can be used for music production and also it can be used for uh, podcasts, okay? So it has four inputs uh, for microphones and uh, maybe for instruments that you're using. And then we have some few knobs that I want to show you how they, they work. So let's move right away to the review of this very uh, sound card. So like I said, it has four inputs. We have XLR inputs and we have TRS inputs, all are combined. So if you have the XLR cable, you can still use it in this very port, as well as if you have the TRS jack, it can be inserted in this very input. So that is all about the inputs. We have four of them and they are identical. Now we have these knobs. They are called the gain knobs. There are four of them for each uh, input. Now the gain knobs are used to increase the volume of the input or rather the sensitivity of the input. So if you put here a microphone and then you push this gain knob towards the clockwise uh, side, you find that it is increasing the volume or the sensitivity of this very input. But you need to be careful that it, it should not be clipping, okay? So for me, I usually put it maybe at the center or just past the center a bit, because if you have a lot of sensitivity of that microphone, it, it is going to pick a lot of noise, okay? So that is about the gain knob. And then we have this button here is called the high impedance button. And it is used when you want to connect, for example, your instrument, let's say a guitar in this input, and you do not have the DI box, you need to put this on and then connect your instrument. So it, it helps to convert that high power and this can manage that very high power, which can be now transmitted to your PC. So this is called the high impedance button. Okay. And then we have the low cut or the high pass filter. And so if you push it in, it increases the high pass of the sensitivity of the input that you've put in here. Okay. So we have high impedance, high impedance for these uh, inputs. And then we have the low cut and the low cut, they still have the same functionalities. Okay. Then you move to this part. We have the mix uh, knob. This mix knob uh, is used to alternate uh, between the input and the door, the digital audio workstation. So you realize when you push it anti-clockwise, it is going to enhance the input. And if you push it to uh, the clockwise side, it is going to enhance the door. However, that does not affect the audio signal that is sent to the PC. But then I realized that when you push this mix knob, to the door side, you realize that if you have your headphones, you are not going to hear the sound from the input, okay? 
So if you want to hear the sound from the input, for example, you are using a microphone, although it's not connected at the moment. If you're using this uh, condenser microphone and you want to hear yourself talk, then you need to push this to the center so that you can hear it. Otherwise, if you put it to the door side, you will not hear it. And if you push it to the input, you are going to hear it. But I've said that does not affect the signal that is being sent in your computer. Then from there, we have the FX knob. This FX knob is used to increase the effect. So if you want to have maybe, for example, echo, you need to push this knob clockwise. The more you push it, the more the effect is hard. And if you do not want the effect, you just take it anti-clockwise and that will not be hard. Okay, and then down there, we have some three, you know, buttons. The first button is called the mono button. And then this is used to switch between the inputs and the outputs. So if the mono is on, then that means that the input, for example, a condenser microphone, is going to be released both to the output of this monitor as well as to the headsets of the left and the right. Get that clear? It's going to get through the left and right output as well as the left and right output for the earphones or the headsets. Then if it is off, that means if you have an input to the left, you have, if you look here clearly, we have one L, which means this input can be dedicated to the left side of the channel, okay? So if you have the input here and then this is off, that means that the input that is being sent in this L is going to be released in the headsets to the left channel. You get that clear? And then this is 2R. That means it can be dedicated to the right channel. So if the mono is off and the input is in R, that means the output is going to be in the right channel. That will also affect the output to the monitors out here. So if it is on, it is sending both to the right and left outputs. And if it is off, it is sending either to the left output or to the right output. I guess you get that clear. The next one is loopback. Now loopback is used to mix the audio or the sound from the PC to the console and then get it back. It, is, it mixes it and gets it back to the PC. So you have maybe uh, a song or a background music on the computer. You can play it. And then when you switch this loop back on, you are going to hear that sound through the sound console. And then it is mixed into stereo and sent back to the computer. So this one is usually used for live streaming or broadcasting. When you are broadcasting and you need background music, you basically turn this loop back on. If it is not on, you're not going to hear the sound from the computer to the console. Okay, then you have FX. This one, when it's on, it just activates the effects that are being added in this console. I hope you're getting value from this video. And if that is the case, please don't forget to like this video and you can also share it to your friends. Now we have the monitor knob. This one is just used to increase or reduce the volume of the monitors. So we, you realize we have the output of the monitors in here. So this knob controls the output of the monitors back here. So if you push it towards clockwise, it increases the volume. If it is anti-clockwise, it reduces the volume. Now to finish on the front side, we have the phones TRS output jacks out here. There are two of them. And above them, we have knobs that are controlling their volumes. So if you push it clockwise, you're increasing the volume. If you push it anti-clockwise, you're reducing the volume. There are two of them. You can connect two headsets on this. So that is pretty everything about the front side. It has a lot of knobs. I've explained all of them and I hope that you got everything. If you did not get it, you can pause this video and go back there and watch. Okay. Now the back side. The back side, I'll start from this side. It has the USB-C uh, port, 
where it takes five volts DC just from, you can use a computer to power that. Remember when I was showing you the USB-C cable, this one, so it comes in here and then this USB is plugged either on a phone's charger header or in the PC and then it powers this. So if you need that to be activated, there is a switch here. You can switch between USB-C or PC USB, okay, which they give both the uh, cable. So if you need this, and this one we've said it transfers the audio from this interface to the computer. So this one is the link between the audio interface and the PC. So if you need that, you switch this. We have a small switch here. You switch it to that side and then you use this cable to transfer your information or your audio from this to your PC. Okay. That is pretty everything about that. Then you have the accompaniment. This is the 3.5 millimeter jack. And this one is used to, uh, you know, add your other accompaniments to the console. Okay. And then we have the line out. These are 6.35 millimeters TRS jacks that are coming in here. You have the left and the right uh, channels that are output in this. So these ones are output channels or output jacks. Then you also have the monitor out, which is the 6.35 millimeter TRS jacks that are used to connect the monitors to this console. And then lastly, we have these two uh, buttons. Now, if you're connecting a condenser microphone like this one of mine, they need what we call phantom power. So this phantom power can be switched on here. So if it is a dynamic microphone, it doesn't need a phantom power. So you can just switch it off. But if you're using a condenser microphone, you need to put on the you now it is on and off, okay? You need to put on the phantom power, which is written plus 48 volts, which needs a lot of power for such microphones, okay? Then there's something I forgot to mention. We have some, we call them uh, the peak lights. Now, these peak lights, we have four of them on each uh, uh, input, okay? So when this signal is on, this, when this signal is on, it means that the volume of the very input is too high. And therefore, it's going to give you a clipping sound. So you need to adjust this gain knob until the signal light goes off. You get that clear? If it is on, whatever uh, is being input in this very console is clipping and it's not fine. So you need to tune it until that light goes off. And then if you have connected a phantom power, for example, microphone, there is a phantom power which is written plus 48 volts and it goes on. So if it is on, that means a phantom power uh, gadget or input has been added. And that one just shows out here. The one that you need to be very careful with is the signal. It usually lights red and it's just an indicator. It tells you the input is too high. You need to reduce the gain so that it goes off and then that will be manageable. My friend, I guess that is pretty everything. This is on budget and I'm hoping that is going to be of great value to you. This is under $200 and you get this uh, console and it's going to help you in your music production. If you need a more detailed a review of this, you can drop me a comment. I can be able to do it and do practically how to use this to give you the best audio ever in this world. I hope that this video helped you. And if you have any questions and concerns about this audio interface, how I purchased it, if you need connections to how I purchased it, please reach out. You can drop me a comment and I'll be able to help you where possible. I hope that this video helped you and if that is the case, please don't forget to like this video and also don't forget to subscribe. You can click anywhere on this screen and watch our next video and then I hope that I will see you in that video. Peace.